was always fairly outgoing, and she would always like to include everybody. Geraldine Underwood was the perfect child, kind, loving, smart, and hardworking. In fact, she was only 11 when she started her first job delivering newspapers with her older brother. She got tips quite often. People really liked her. One intensive search is underway in eastern Idaho at this hour. It was along that very newspaper route when the unimaginable happened on June 29th, 1993. At least two witnesses say they saw a man in his 30s, about five foot seven, jump out of the car, grab Gerald Lee, and shoved her back in the car, and took off. Joyce and I were in the garden. No cell phones back those days. And so they tried to call us in our home phone, of course. It was outside, so we didn't hear it. A lady on the corner of... Uh, where she was abducted at, actually called another member of our ward. And she came over and says, you know, is someone helping Geraldine? She saw her get in the car, so she wondered if someone was helping her. Geraldine had left her home here on Kurtwood Place, the same home her parents still live today. She walked her route and was abducted less than a half a mile away at the corner of Carter and Main Streets. And the abductor was inside this home right here behind me. Her parents called the police, and Jeff, her father, went out to look for her, while her mother, Joyce, anxiously waited at home. I remember looking out the window and just waiting for her to come around the corner and say, hey, guess how much tip I got, Mom? We had no idea where to look or what to do anymore, you know. <clears throat> yeah, and it got real serious. Authorities say she was abducted about 5.45 this evening on the west side of Pocatello. I just feel so bad for the mom and dad. The afternoon passed and the sun set with no sign of Jara Lee. We're simply treating this as a, as a stranger abduction. We have no, really, uh, no reason to believe it's anything else. The next day, door-to-door -door searches commenced, and that night, a special meeting was held at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints building Jara Lee attended every Sunday. Hundreds gathered tonight in Pocatello to show support for the family of 11-year-old Jara Lee Underwood. Leaders from Underwood's LDS stake asked church members to fast and pray for Jara Lee's safety. Everybody knelt in the stake and had a prayer. I, I had, had a feeling that after the prayer that she was okay, of course, to a mother, a child okay, that means she's going to be back to you soon. Of course, later finding out that at that point she was had already been killed. Um, yeah. She was okay. She was with Heavenly Father. While area residents prayed, Pocatello police stopped traffic on Hour South after hour. She's my friend. Day after day. We just want our daughter back. No new information about where this sweet little 11-year-old could be. Please bring her back or let someone know where she's at. Please. Let her come home. Then, seven excruciating days later, a break. It was Monday before they finally told us they had the man in custody. Until a whole week later. Mm -hmm. and, and did you know the details at that point? Mm -hmm. They just no. said, we have somebody in custody. Yeah. That person, 45-year-old James Edward Wood. This is the man police say kidnapped and killed Geraldine Underwood. A man who had moved to Pocatello from St. Louis months earlier. He was eating dinner with his cousin when Geraldine came to the door, collecting money for the paper. Minutes later, Wood left the home and approached the child. But where he was at, they had written her a check. He told her that the check was no good and that if she would give him the check, he would give her the money. Cash. And while she was looking in her bag to do that, that's when he grabbed her and, and pushed her in the car. At his press conference this morning, Pocatello Chief Jim Benham talked about notifying the Underwood family. Probably the saddest thing I've had to do <clears throat> in 26 years of wearing a badge. The Underwoods later learned that Wood drove their daughter to the Preston area through small Idaho towns and then north to Pocatello, ending up in Idaho Falls. During the drive, she asked why he had kidnapped her and spoke about her clogging class and Mormon faith. Wood eventually stopped here at the Snake River north of Idaho Falls. He told detectives that Geraldine needed to use the bathroom. He followed her into the bushes, and that's when he shot her once, maybe twice. He said he couldn't remember. He then cut up her body and threw her remains in the water. And I know that the 
uh, mortician did everything he could. I mean, they, they stayed up all night trying to figure out what to do, you know, after, after they recovered, uh, as much as they could recover from her body. We never did ever get to see her. her. No, that was really hard. The suspect appeared in court on closed circuit television from the jail. Wood was charged with first degree murder and the prosecutor sought the death penalty. Now there will be a memorial service for Geraldine that's planned for Saturday. hearings began for Wood, and he ultimately was sentenced to death, as Judge Lynn Windmill called him a cold-blooded, pitiless slayer who would murder again. Investigators soon learned Wood had a 30-year trail of crime, covering at least six states with murders and attempted murders in Louisiana, and as many as 10 rapes. They figured they could probably pin 30 murders on him across this country that had never been solved. Did you all ever get to speak with him or to him? Nope. He never, he never took the stand. Uh, we've never had, the, never had the opportunity to speak to him. Have you even met him? We saw him in a courtroom setting. Did you want to speak to him? Nope. Didn't have no <laughs> desire to speak to him. Did he nope. ever try to reach out to you? Nope. No letters, no, no calls, nothing. no nothing. The Underwoods tried to move forward following Geraldine's death. They went to counseling, and Jeff recalls one session that was particularly therapeutic. The counselor and I, we made a replica of James Woods and actually did exactly what he did to Geraldine and went through that whole process. That was really therapeutic. It was like a mannequin, or? I just made a, a scarecrow, and I did exactly what he had done to Geraldine. Just, just in order to get rid of that anger and not to be able to continue to harbor it. As Wood sat on death row, the Underwoods learned some shocking news. His case would need to be retried for sentencing as the U.S. Supreme Court ruled capital defendants must be sentenced to die by a jury rather than a judge. I just got really, really disheartened by that whole thing. I said, there's no way that they can bring him back to be resentenced. And so I said a, a prayer, you know, I says, you know, I asked Heavenly Father, I says, would you please just take his life and it would be done and over with. And it was two weeks later that they called and says that he died in prison. Wood, then 56, died of natural causes on January 30th, 2004. It just brought total closure to me. It was done. It was over. But even though he was gone, Jeff still had questions about the man who killed his daughter. So he walked into the Bannock County Prosecutor's Office and asked to see a profile that had been done on Wood, detailing his life from childhood until death. Uh, it kind of maybe shed that I maybe could have a little bit of compassion on him. But to see his situation with his life as a, as a child and as a teenager, and I said, okay, I can maybe begin to maybe why he made the choices that he did. We just did a, had a little memorial thing. The Underwoods say it's hard to believe that Jara Lee would be 34 years old today. They wonder what type of a mother she'd be, how many children she'd have, and what she would have accomplished. But her short life and untimely death have taught them a lot. I've learned the most is that there's a lot worse things than death. I guess just having the knowledge that we have that we will be with her again. If I would have continued to harbor the anger that I had inside me, it would have eventually killed me because the hatred and the anger will take your life. To be able to know that the day will come that we'll be with her again, uh, to know that life does continue on, to, to have that knowledge is a a great strength. In Pocatello, Nate Eaton, eastidahonews.com.